Hi, tea timers. Um, so I feel so much lighter this week. I'm sure you all do. That was such wonderful news about Pfizer, the um, initial results on their vaccine. 90% efficacy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like I'm so happy if 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 the rest of the things and the research comes out and it's okay oh my goodness that's amazing I know that the epidemiologists and virologists were saying well you know um, many vaccines might have a 50 percent or but 90 plus percent whoa and then yesterday uh, E Lilly got their um, therapeutics approved and those therapeutics work really really well so we're gonna get back to normal life <laughs> and just when i went and i um i purchased a pair of scissors there i'm awaiting their arrival so i can cut oh here there's my dog oh hold on she wants in the door hold on he's Here we go, hi. Okay, she's here. Okay, so so it's really, really, really exciting news. Hello, yes, I'm fine. I know, she heard my voice talking. Okay, oh, right in the mouth, yuck. <laughs> okay, calm down, here we go. So today, what tea, you're wondering what I'm drinking? Well, here I got a, um, a message from Jake Alacantra Elazar from the Philippines and he said, hi, this is Meg. Can I ask you something? Do you try cinnamon tea? It's so nice to taste. Try it, Mrs. Meg. So um, yeah, I don't usually do the many of the herbals other than the peppermint, <clears throat> but I have everything for people, family and friends who come by. And I had a friend who was very partial to um, cinnamon tea. And so I have a cinnamon apple spice, which this one is. And I also have a, a licorice, I think, or something, licorice cinnamon or something like that. So I'm going to try it. It smells very Christmassy almost with the apple and the spice. And um, I make applesauce all the time. It smells a little like that, but there's something else uh, there as well, which I'm not sure what it is. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Hmm. I think this would be good if you made it sort of like a, if you added this tea as sort of a complement to a hot buttered rum, like with just a little dollop of rum and a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of cinnamon and maybe a tiny bit of butter. Butter's always good. You wouldn't think it, but a little dollop of butter in um, your like apple pie and stuff like that just adds that extra, extra bit of, uh, mm. yes, it's very nice. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> Mm. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, on the tea subject, Dave uh, Fochi said, in my case, I drink predominantly white tea, such as white nettles, white nettles, I think, or ba mu da, white peony, which have little tannins and are very relaxing. I haven't tried either of those. So that might be interesting to do. I um, We have eaten nettles when we were little and we didn't have much money. We harvested a lot of our food. And one of the things you can eat is nettles. Not not when they get big and tall and really, really hard because then they get really stringy and hard to chew. But when they're first growing in the spring, you could ride your bikes and um, You'd, you'd be very careful. So I'd take a colander and scissors because you wouldn't want to get stung by the nettles, but you can cut off the, um, the little young plants and then make sure not to touch them. If you want to wear gloves, you can. We didn't have gloves to spare, but... Um, and then you put them in boiling water. You can steam them, add a little bit of salt, a little bit of butter. We did margarine because we couldn't afford butter, but a little bit of, um, you know, pepper, and you can just you can eat nettles. So there's lots of things you can eat. And, um, but I didn't know you could make tea with nettles. Also, we did, um, we would dry, we would dry it along and in the, in the ditches sometimes, all along the ditches sometimes where we lived, um, at this one place, there was wild mint growing. And so we would collect a whole bunch of that mint and put it, stuff the pot full of it and then, um, cook, 
cook it up with the leaves and that was really tasty. Um, I didn't realize it was such a luxury. Now, if I go to a, a restaurant, well, I haven't been to a restaurant in <laughs> like, I don't know, nine months now. <laughs> But um, when you go and they say, oh, fresh mint tea, you all think, ooh. <laughs> Whereas before, when I was a kid, I thought tea bags were fancy because you know you had to pay for them and mint along the road was free. Mm. Okay, let's see now. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking that cinnamon tea. Thanks, Jake. Um, okay, uh, uh, Salvia Boquette. Meg, do you have an easy recipe for pear cake or apple cake? I don't have a specific recipe. Um, I know my friends do, they, they have, but what I've just always done is I find a few recipes that I like and then I just zhuzh them up. So you can take any cake recipe that you like and then you can add, if you want, you can alternate a little bit of the white sugar for brown sugar. You can add some cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, and you can chop up apples, peel them, and take, out, take out the core, and then chop them in little pieces. And then you can, you can put them, mix them in the dough after you mix up, put in all the flour and the liquids and stuff. So you can make pretty much any recipe you want into whatever you want. Or you could, if you wanted, you could chop up a little bit of um, cranberries to go with, because that goes nice with apple. Or if you wanted, sometimes you could take the apple and you could toss the apple in a little bit of lemon uh, before you put it in and a little bit of, um, you know, uh, cinnamon and nutmeg and maybe a little dollop of rum and a tiny bit of brown sugar and move that around till it has a really good taste and then mix that in. So you can really, like with cooking, you can really do anything you like. You just need the basics of how much baking powder, how much baking soda, how much, and some do and some don't. And, um, but you can also find a really good recipe if you just uh, Google it. My friend, actually, I asked her because she said she just made a new apple cake. So when I get that from her, I'll make sure to give it to you. Um, let's see, scroll and key. In Psycho, it looks like you're crying real tears. Are you able to cry on cue? Also, was Anthony Perkins really playing the piano? Thank you. Um, so I don't remember if Anthony was playing the piano. I actually don't remember that he was playing the piano. <laughs> I did the movie, but I never saw it. So I, I, I and it was a long, long time ago. So I remember things about doing the movie, but I don't remember that. But in terms of crying real tears, yeah, I do. But that's just because that's the way I was trained. I know many actors they have um, who are trained in a different way. So when they have to have a scene where they cry, they have the make a person come and they have a little pipe thing that they like they blow a little bit of crystals. Uh, uh, like a fumy crystals into the actor's eyes and then the actor can um, then they say rolling they do it right before they start shooting rolling and then the tears start for the actor and and they can do their acting um, for me part of the joy of writing or acting is diving fully into the character and experiencing someone else's life um, having the privilege to walk in their shoes for whatever period of time I am writing the book or I am acting. And so for me, um, if I can't get to the emotional place that the character is, that means I, I haven't done my homework. So I haven't figured out why this particular moment is so important to the person or done the backstory that makes, if you follow the steps, to it, it makes um, that the only possible thing that happens, you know, because um, when I memorize, when I work on a script, I memorize, um, like some people only memorize their lines, but I would memorize everybody's lines so that my response is coming not out of, and the things that are triggering aren't things that I have to like squeeze my butt cheeks together and be like, okay, it's coming up. I better, you know, where you act in a bubble. And sometimes you can feel actors doing it where they're acting in their own bubble, like, okay. And you know, they're just running through the whatever sensory or whatever stuff they're doing to get to that point. But for me, I have to get my characters actions and reactions from the other characters dialogue so that what they say affects me 
that then causes my response and it's kind of a call and response song so that you're you're singing and one of you singing the melody or the other is and the other is doing the harmonies but it's a emotional song so um you know like we all have things that trigger us <laughs> we all have things now in order to get in touch with those things i did have to do uh classes sensory classes to get in touch with my own um my own emotions and my own uh, sorrows. So you would do sometimes exercises where you would lie in the acting class on the floor and you'd be talked through different things. So you'd choose a memory that, you know, you choose two sensory things, like one that made you really happy where you just like couldn't help, but just feel lightness or joy or happiness or something. And then you would also choose a memory where you felt, you know, trapped, where you felt scared, where you, uh, something happened that made you very sad and you'll alternate uh, going back and forth between the two the two memories so that you can change like that on a dime and your emotions can and you learn where emotions uh, sit in your body which is also very good I actually recommend acting uh, classes for everybody because it really helps you get in touch in getting in touch sometimes see it's easier to get in touch with your character's feelings because your own story isn't so wrapped up in it. So you get in touch with your character's feelings and you start to feel like, oh, uh, when something feels wrong to the character, it, it sits here in their body. And oh, when when the character's scared, her the heart starts pounding really, or oh, oh, that's what it feels like when the character, when they're lying and, and they feel this flush of shame, you know, in their body or a triumph, like, yeah, I'm getting over that, over on that person. So through your characters, you learn how to map your own body and how to find out if you're walking true in your life or if you aren't. And so you get much better about reading not only the subtle clues that your body gives you, but also the subtle clues that may, your husband's body's giving out. You know, he might he might think that, you know, everything's all fine and dandy, but you notice that he's, um, you know, um, like chewing his the side of his mouth or or his legs are going jiggle, 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 or his face, he's saying one thing, right? But you can see that the, the eyes are shut or the face is shut. And you're like, it helps you know, like, honey, what's wrong? Or, you know, if you can read your own and you can read somebody else's. I mean, sometimes it's a pain in the ass for my husband, too, because he thinks he's just going along fine or, or you know, just being. And I, I can always tell. So um, so it's, it's a blessing, but it's also a curse. <laughs> <laughs> because actors are trained to read, well, some, actually some are pretty clueless, <laughs> terrible, but, but you're kind of trained to read the subtle clues. Um, I think it probably helped my sister enormously with her poker playing because she can read all the little tells and she's gotten so, oh my gosh, Jen's gotten so good at reading since she started the poker, like the acting took her to this level, but the poker, oh my gosh. We were playing this game when we could all be together where you had to write, where you have to write down, I think it's called Balderdash, where you have to write down a pretend thing of what this thing means. And every time I wrote down something and then it folded it up and put it in, whenever they were being read, I could feel Jen's eyes going around the table and whenever they had land on me and it was my one, I'd feel guilty. And she'd say, Meg, <laughs> and I'd start laughing because I couldn't fool her. Every single time she could read my, whatever my, I guess going ha, 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 <laughs> is a pretty big tell. <laughs> but I could, I could hold it for other people, but my sister, no way. So, um, so yeah. So yeah, I, I went in all of my movies and my character's crying, I'm crying. If my character's it's scared, I'm scared. And, 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 and um, if my character is feeling joy i i feel it and it's so it's a wonderful gift because you get to live all these different lives but sometimes i wonder you know because they say oh stressful situations 
you know, they age you this amount of years or whatever. And I think of all my poor characters. And of course, they aren't going to have a movie or a play or whatever about somebody in the happy, happy, la, la, la going through, unless it's a comedy, which is why I wanted to do comedy. Because <laughs> I thought it would be easier on my body and whatnot. But, um, but, but when you do like a, a character, you dive into usually a turning point in their life or the muck of their life. And I'm like, oh my goodness, no wonder I've got so much gray hair. And, uh, and, uh, oh, hmm, interesting. I wonder if, if like when I get older, if I get Alzheimer's, if I'll get stuck sometimes in the memories of my characters or if it'll just be m mine. Ah, interesting. Ooh. <laughs> well, their memories might be better than getting stuck in my own childhood. We'll see. Hopefully I don't get Alzheimer's. This, well, this is cozy. <laughs> Aw. So anyway, um, I, I'm enjoying my tea. Thanks, Jake. And I'll see you all in uh, uh, two days. Bye-bye. Oops, did I turn it off?